In this video, we're going to look at some interface conventions and some of the general concepts that apply to Chromophone as a whole. Now, as far as the interface, we adjust the knobs, obviously, by clicking and dialing them left or right. But we can adjust in fine increments using any of the modifiers. So it doesn't have to be a specific one. Command, Option, Control, Shift, any of them will work for fine increments. Now, we have these switches to activate certain areas on or off. When they're dark, they're off, obviously. When they're clicked like that, they're on. And we also have for the sync button in some of these parameters at the bottom, we can turn that on or off by clicking similarly. And we have the drop down menus like we saw in the program and bank menus that appear, left and right arrows appear once we hover our mouse over it. And they appear as well in other areas of the interface. For example, when we're changing the resonator types over here, we can use those left and right buttons or get a drop down menu there, but they appear when you hover your mouse over it similarly here for the multi-effects and other areas of the interface. Now we have an undo and redo button here, our history button, so very easy to go back and go forth. I've changed the parameters here a few times, so you can see I'm stepping backwards and forwards. And we also have a compare button here that's very useful. So let's say I'm working with a preset, and I'll choose, let's say this one for example, and maybe I want to modify some parameters. So I like that, but I want to compare what it's like to the original. I can use this to toggle back to the original. And when we're in compare mode, when that's lit up, we can't further adjust any of the parameters. You see this flashing, letting us know that it's in the temporary compare mode. So I can instantly jump back and forth between the preset and whatever way that I'm altering it. Very useful. Now, modulation is a concept that's used a lot in many plugins, but this one in particular. And basically, it allows for the variation of a parameter around its current value, and it's controlled by a modulation signal or modulation source, as a lot of plugins call it. So we adjust the modulation by dragging the modulation dots up or down that appear. And we can see here this dot, and you'll see as I click and drag up and down, you'll see these lines appear and they indicate the modulation range and you'll notice that there are two colors the darker colored ones indicate the positive range of the modulation parameter and the lighter shade one is the negative range and we'll explore all this in more detail I just want to sort of give you an overview of how it works and there's lots of different modulation sources available we can modulate by midi pitch and that's key tracking we have a key knob over there and we can you see a second ring appearing now because there's two modulation sources on that one but we can modulate by the pitch of a note using the key tracking over there and we can modulate by velocity using the ones that are marked velocity other sources we have modulation wheel for example here on the vibrato we can use that as a modulation source and we can also use the actual noise envelope and we can see that over here this envelope parameter over there based on the settings over here and we also have an lfo a dedicated lfo section over here again we'll explore all this in more detail but you can see LFO there, for example, and in other areas of the interface as another potential modulation source. Now, there's a couple of general concepts behind the whole physical modeling paradigm that Chromophone works with that I want to introduce you to. And in the next videos, as we're working through all the parameters in all the different sections, keep these in mind because they sort of are fundamental aspects as to how Chromophone works. Now, the whole idea is about coupling objects together. And these are the two different types of resonators. We can choose the different types from the drop down menu or the next and previous ones but it's about coupling them together and when you couple objects together you take into account how they interact together and they result in new objects based on how they interact so we have a mallet hitting a marimba bar that's resonating against a closed tube for example in this example over here if this was on and it's about how these two interact together and they create a new virtual object and they're sort of related to the original elements but they behave and sound differently based on how we have the parameters set now, the rigidity of one of the objects compared to the other is an important sort of paradigm in how this works. And it determines the amount of bidirectional energy that's exchanged. And that's due to the impedance, meaning how much resistance one object applies to the other, how much it opposes the motion when it's subjected to force. So if we have like a soft, let's say a string over here, there's obviously going to be a different quality to the result of a string striking a closed tube versus, let's say, a metal beam striking a closed tube and as you can see we can cycle through the different resonators by clicking there as well in addition to using these drop down menus 
Now, another thing to keep in mind is that the amplitude of the motion of an object is going to be greater when it's excited at its resonant frequency. So when you have these two objects resonating together, the frequency in some of these active cutoffs and different frequency controls, depending where the frequencies are set, that'll determine the amplitude of how these two resonate and interact together. So a lot of areas of the ranges are not that loud and some areas are louder than others. And we're going to explore all this, but keep that in mind. So the coupling takes into account how rigid one object is compared to the other, and that determines how much energy is transmitted from the first to the second one. And the amount of the coupling between these resonators affects not only the tone that's generated, but also the decay time. So we have decay control over here, and we have release, and they're all sort of interacting together, decay, release, and sometimes other controls, but also the amount of coupling that's going on, meaning where the slider is, it all has an effect on the decay time of the interaction. And finally, last thing to keep in mind, a resonating object with a long decay is usually coupled with a second resonator object that has a short decay time. We'll explore all the variations, but it's kind of a general working idea. So those are general things to keep in mind as we work through the interface. And in the next video, we're going to jump in and start looking at the mallet module over here.